Hey everybody, welcome to the Lightning Talks. So Lightning Talks are short, five minutes-ish talks. Um, we're not gonna be super strict about it, but like keep it to five. Um, you can come out here and uh, put your name up here. We have a little bit longer than usual to, to give some talks. And we also have some, some giveaways. We have several PHP Storm licenses and several Drupalize Drupalize me right here, and um, I'd encourage you, like, if you win one of these, don't take it unless you need it, because there are people out here that, like, really need it. I don't want, like, someone like Joe Schindler to win to Drupalize me and be like, so long, suckers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or if you already have PHP Storm, you know, hand it out to someone who, who could use it. But, uh, yeah, so if you come up here and give a, a lightning talk, or even if you just put your name on the list and maybe don't get time to do it or so, uh, you could potentially win one of these. And first up, we have Kyle Hall, who is the unspoken hero of Florida Drupal Camp. He, he, or, he, he is one of the primary organizers. He's really awesome. And so, yeah, uh, so I'm going to kind of keep you honest by doing around, you'll do around five minutes. So, all right. So, obviously, I don't have a presentation because this is going to be a group event. We're all going to give a lightning talk. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room. And each person is going to introduce themselves with the after party being next. You're going to introduce yourself. You're going to say your name, what you do, and one interesting fact about yourself. And then it's going to keep going through the room, all the rows. Keep in mind, we did lock the doors, so you can't escape now. There's no leaving. There's no getting out of this. So we're going to start with Leroy. Name, where you work, what you do, and an interesting uh, fact. Let's see. I'm Leroy. I work at... Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, interesting fact, I'm here. <laughs> there it is. Woo! Oh, God. Herschel's up next. Herschel's up next. We're going down the line. <laughs> My name's Mike Herschel. I'm a, I, I work at, I'm a front-end developer. I work at Lullaby. An interesting thing is I have two dogs and a hammock, and the dogs will get in the hammock and snuggle each other in the hammock, and it's pretty cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, next. All right, I'm um, I work for the Palm Beach County Library System. I'm the website specialist. Um, interesting fact. Um, no pressure. Nigerian. That's interesting. Keep it going. Keep it going. Can we still, uh, Freelance front end developer out of Chicago. Interesting fact is right now I'm about maybe two weeks away from making another batch of homemade pastrami. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> yes. Keep it going. <laughs> I'm Jim Smith and I am currently unemployed. Freshly retired. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I yeah, consider myself sort of retired but I'm here so I can't be told and uh, the, but the main reason I quit my job is I will be starting a, an attempt to throw hike the Pacific Crest Trail on March 24th. Wow, nice. Salim. All right, hey, I'm uh, Salim Makani. Uh, uh, I do Dev Panel, which is uh, uh, interesting fact, uh, Death Panel lets you do uh, stuff like Pantheon and Aquia on your own AWS account uh, for a lot less. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lee Walker. I uh, run Coke Journeyman on my Drupal shop out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Triple Cup Chattanooga coming up, June the 9th, everyone should be there. <laughs> Uh, if enough people come, we will definitely have the party on a boat. How about that? <laughs> I, I already heard the party was on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> that was the opening session. Someone said that. Hi, my name is Aris Creates, and I have a media and marketing business. An interesting fact about me is I was in a German film as an extra. Nice. Yes. John? Oh. Calling down. Good yeah, nice. eyesight. <laughs> I'm Sean Payton. I'm from uh, Florida State Department of Environmental Protection. Mason is here with about four, three or four of my colleagues. 
Interesting fact. Yeah. <laughs> interesting fact. Right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just came in. Uh, interesting fact. I play the piano and organ. I'm uh, Ofer Shal. I'm a front end developer. Uh, looking to be hired these days. Um, interesting fact that as part of my military uh, service, I was developing F-16 flight simulators. Cool. Wow. wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, my, my name is Steven Hanilica. Um, I work with entrepreneurs to help them perform better, and I walked across the United States. Oh, wow. wow. Nice. So take that, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Rickard, I'm officially the director of innovation at Palantir.net, who is hiring for a front end developer <laughs> and engineer. Um, job postings are on the website. <laughs> In my spare time, I uh, create board games and card games. Nice. Do we have some for the after party? We, we do. Perfect. Next. My name is James Candon. I'm a software engineer at Code Journeyman in Chattanooga, otherwise called the loud British guy. <laughs> um, interesting fact. Uh, my last name starts with a C, but it's pronounced J because it's Turkish. Which, yeah. That works. Everyone's been calling him the wrong name all the time. I've told this to you. Now we know. So my name is Alex McKay. Um, I'm a Drupal developer at Red Hat. And uh, interesting fact, I'm one of the organizers of the Orlando Drupal meetup. Um, we're on hiatus, but talking about getting back together online. So I get on the Florida channel on the Drupal Slack. Love that plug. Next. I'm Helena McKay. I'm a senior front end developer at Lullabot. And an interesting fact about me is that I have been unsuccessfully campaigning for a pet raccoon for my husband for years. <laughs> oh, come on, we need support for that. <laughs> we could probably find one around here somewhere. My name is Matt Carterton. Uh, I have a company called Aspiring Web. And the interesting fact about me is I have eight horses on a horse farm from California. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm April Sides. I'm a backend developer for Lullabots, and my special fact is that I'm less hated. Nice. Ooh, nice. <laughs> uh, I'm Mike Anello, Drupal uh, Easy developer trainer. My interesting fact is that I have a picture of a teenage Mike Herschel Whoa. on my phone that I will show anybody who buys me a beer. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion a lot of people have these pictures of Mike Herschel. <laughs> Um, I work for myself. I'm a search engine optimization specialist and lead generation professional. Uh, interesting fact about me, uh, I've been chased by an elephant. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how did it go? <laughs> I mean, you're here. <laughs> Gained weight just to mimic my enemy. Uh, <laughs> for sure. For sure. Right, I'm, uh, I'm Bo Shipley. I'm a back end developer for Blabberlink. And uh, interesting fact is, I'm one of the best dart throwers in Chattanooga. Ooh. 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 Bold claim. I'm a freelance triple developer. <clears throat> For opportunity and um, interesting fact is I'm from a country in South America where we speak Dutch. Wow. Mm. <laughs> I'm Kelly Albrecht, I'm an Agile and DevOps coach with Last Call Media and my favorite part of the Kiwi is the skin. <laughs> 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 it's 
So we don't trust Kelly. Next. <laughs> um, Eric Anderson, um, work at Ford Department of Environmental Protection. Um, God, interesting fact. Um, my daughter chokes me out on a weekly basis. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Sounds like a great relationship. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm Sam Alline. I'm also with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, I play guitar occasionally. Nice, very nice. Do you have a guitar with you? No. That'd make a great lightning no, talk. I'm not <laughs> Hi, I'm Rich Bunrath. I'm from Stony Brook University, just up in New York. Uh, I guess the interesting fact is, up there, I also run an adult social sports league, so we play kickball. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what we were going to say. I run an adult. Oh. <laughs> 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 My name is Marsha Buckingham. I'm just a, a, a single client uh, freelance uh, Drupal front end mostly. Linda and I here also play music together. As a matter of fact, had we brought the banjo and the guitar, we'd be doing a lightning. <laughs> Probably playing the Drupal song. You guys play like uh, metalcore, right? <laughs> it's like the Thrasher stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> you should hear her on the banjo. <laughs> should have brought the banjo. Now we have something to look forward to next year. Yeah, we'll have to do that. We'll play the Drupal song that we that's on <clears throat> Mike's. Maybe uh, after a few cocktails tonight. <laughs> gotta have the instrument though, you know. Take plenty, air, you Take plenty of pictures. Take plenty of pictures of Herschel tonight. <laughs> We'll get plenty of cocktails. I'm Linda Cook. I'm a freelance Drupal developer, also looking for opportunities, and uh, I play guitar with this lady right here. Nice. <laughs> Tim. I'm Tim Erickson. I'm the founder of a small Drupal shop called Triplo, and if you come to Clinton City's Drupal camp, you might get to see a juggle fire. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> nice. We could probably find fire t tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe make that happen. My name is Andy Giles. I run a Drupal development consulting business called Bloke Interactive, and I play bluegrass mandolin. And oh my I've been a bring it and sit in with these. Okay. <laughs> well, we're accepting recruits for next year. Now we've got a band. So we've got your instrument. Bring it. It's a simple song. If you want to hear it, go go to go to Mike's uh, website and listen to his podcast because he starts the podcast with the song we'll be doing. Uh, my name is Brandon Ratzloff. I work with an event management company. And uh, my interesting fact, I'm an avid poker player, but I am not a gambler. <laughs> All right. I'm Jumana Botts. I work at a company called Bounteous. Uh, my interesting fact is I can very badly play somewhere over the rainbow on the theremin. <laughs> we literally have a band for next year. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ashley Jones. <coughs> I work for OCO Labs. I do people support, and we are the company behind Horizon. Um, and an interesting fact about me is this is my first Drupal camp. Woo! Round of applause there. Perfect. Uh, my name is Shannon Sumner. I work at Tesla. Um, interesting fact about me. Um, my wife and I homeschool and I work remotely, so we never leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just not that much on the cars. Yeah. Okay, my name is Alessandro Bonfatti. I work for Tesla too, uh, senior software developer. Um, interesting fact about me, I, I think I am one of the few Italians that doesn't like pasta or sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And an interesting part of the about me is I'm originally from Ukraine. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Okay. I am Max. I am from London, Canada area. Uh, I'm a kind developer, and I like fishing. Perfect. I'm uh, Brian Perry. I'm a front end developer at Samius. Uh, and an interesting fact about me is I'm looking to get rid of the record. <laughs> 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 I know. I know exactly who you should talk to about that. <laughs> My 
my name is Brian Bateman. I'm a Drupal developer at Hook42. Um, and uh, fun fact for me, this is my first time ever being in Florida. Woo! Perfect. Uh, I am the Nerdstein. This is how the is. And uh, from Pennsylvania, I'm a VP of Engineering at Hook42. Uh, fun fact about me, uh, I don't like Mike Herschel. <laughs> <laughs> I want to report something, Jordana. <laughs> I'm Kevin Porras from Manatee. That's the agency that I work for. Um, we're from Costa Rica. Um, I'm a developer. In fact, um, I'm terrible at CSS, and I'll be giving a front-end-oriented talk tomorrow. So. <laughs> well, well, interesting fact. That one? That oh, the, <laughs> tomorrow? Oh, oh my God! I'm so sorry. I missed it. I'm so sorry. That's I'm going. interesting. <laughs> All right, next. So my name is Elisa Spinach. I also come from Costa Rica, and I am working for Hook Forty Two. Uh, I'm Jessica Sanchez. I'm a developer for Hook well, I can decide for an interesting fact. I don't need pizza, maybe. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and I've heard that, I noticed that Q sounds just like the letter Q, but with four summer words. Um, sorry, letters. And that blows my mind. <laughs> well, I think it's important for us to adjust our expectations and, and align you know, the expectations of how good pizza is, as I learned in Jordana's talk <laughs> earlier. Maybe, you know, pizza is just not as great as we all know it is. So, <laughs> that's fine. It's totally fine. Next. Uh, name is Will Colon. I'm a happy retiree here in Sarasota. Ooh. I am uh, a volunteer at a uh, nonprofit where I'm implementing Drupal and CDCRM. Uh, interesting fact about uh, me, I guess, is that I grew up in the pizza business. <laughs> 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 oh, you guys have a lot to talk about tonight. <laughs> I'm David Yonker, a uh, Drupal developer at Media Current. Uh, fun fact about me, I collect and restore old arcade machines. Woo! That's oh, awesome. Never working all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, my name's Albert Goldman. I'm a developer at Coney. And fun fact about me is I enjoy rock climbing. Uh, my name is Christian Crawford. I'm a Drupal developer at the Jacksonville. My work has been inspired. Uh, something interesting. I speak German. Nice. Ooh. My name is Priya My name is Priya Denison, and I work for Techful. Um, and I'm a front end and a back end developer. So developer. And um, a fun fact is, I can speak and read. Nice, very nice. I just need work. I'm a developer for Civic Actions. Um, I just need to work just like six steps. Uh, like that. um, that's not a fun fact. Uh, fun fact is, I, uh, when I'm not developing, I'm a non power tool and tool woodworker. Oh, very nice. Very nice, congrats. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Um, I work at Fortitions, like uh, as a senior engineer. And interesting thing, um, I live in Miami, but I am from Cuba. Very nice. Uh, uh, I'm Brandon. Uh, I'm a developer at uh, Purple Rock Scissors. Uh, interesting thing is uh, I can play the upright bass uh, if somebody would teach me how to play the upright bass. <laughs> <laughs> An actual interesting thing is, uh, I'm, my mother is Puerto Rican, my father is Chinese, uh, but I was born in Jamaica. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> right then. <laughs>
my name's Eric. Uh, I also work at Purple Rock Scissors as a developer. A uh, fun fact about me, uh, a couple years ago, by mistake, I did a hole in one. Uh, <laughs> You're telling that story forever. <laughs> Oh, really? That's your Mortal Kombat machine? Uh, we're in America for an MC2 machine as well, so if you have one, I'm a real. I'm Ryan. I am a Subaru driving, soccer loving, Russian speaking Jamaican living in Orlando. <laughs> working for Design Zillas. Um, fun fact uh, my wife and I are currently undertaking a study exploring the effectiveness of Overcooked 2 as a marital aid. We actually have a great taco truck idea we want to run by you. <laughs> we discussed this earlier. I'm Corey Snodgrass. Um, I work here in Orlando for Wisconsin USA as a programmer. And uh, interesting thing lately, I've been making a couple of short films. But... Awesome. Uh, so I'm Tommy Slyker. I work as a front end developer for Canopy Studios. Fun fact is I wrote Very nice. Um, my name is uh, Will Jackson. I am a Drupal engineer at Canopy Studios. Uh, fun facts: uh, my wife and I are expecting a baby in June. I'm having a puppy named Docker, and I'm an amateur astrophotographer, so I take pictures of the sky. That's awesome. Tom Slyker, uh, Broad Street Consulting, South Carolina. Interesting fact will be I have three children. My uh, oldest just uh, started maintaining her first Drupal site. The youngest uh, works for me full time managing Drupal sites. And uh, my middle child is miraculous. <laughs> Perfect. Every day I'm Drupal. My name is Jesus Maralivas. Um, I am head of products of We Know. Basically, I'm in my hotel because I'm in the corner of the company. And a fun fact, it's uh, I born and grew up in a city called Mexicali. It has a twin cities, and a US city which is called Mexico. And I mean, both city names yeah, are created based on Mexico and in, 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 in Calexico. I mean, I mean, I mean, in, in California names bring together Mexicali. <coughs> And it was Cal Lexico. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. I didn't know that. Uh, Mark Casillas, I uh, do things at Media Current. Uh, live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I play bass in a band, but I can't teach you how to play an Albert bass. <laughs> mm. You're responsible for my badge laceration. Oh, cool. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh man. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. I'm Frank. I work with Adventist Healthcare IT as a developer 
and support of our electronic health care systems. I'm spectacularly average, and I uh, wish I was left-handed, could play the organ, play the banjo, play the guitar, but unfortunately none of those things apply, so. <laughs> Hello, my name is Daniel. Uh, I'm from Costa Rica. I'm a football developer from for opportunities. Uh, but this is my first football camp outside of Costa Rica. Woo! Nice. certified to be a snowboard instructor in the central division, there's probably like a one in 50 or so chance that I would administer your exam. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. My name is Amber Mass. I'm the production manager and trainer at Drupal IT in Oregon. I like to make things with my nieces. The last thing we built was a mini golf hole with an automated hammer um, out of cardboard and a robotics platform called Cricket. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, my name is George Campbell. I'm local from Melbourne, Florida. I own full-time photo revival and do uh, media conversion from uh, old, old photography to digital. Um, I also do photo restoration. And the interesting thing is I absolutely love going out the uh, night launches up at Kennedy Space Center to watch the rockets. There's one on the 21st if anybody's hanging around. <laughs> My name's Ryan Moody. I work for Florida Realtors, uh, web developer there. Uh, fun fact is I've never won anything from scratch off. <laughs> <laughs> My name Best is of Ryan. luck. I was calling a little design to work with the digital girls up there. And in terms of fact, I would like, like to do a variety of just. <laughs> nice. Chet Rocco, Senior Occupational Developer for Realtors. And the fun fact for me is I can't wait to buy my own home. Me either. <laughs> 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 My name is Ben Drunabelt. I have a small company called Drop Foundry. Uh, fun fact is uh, back in 09, I moved to the Cap Peninsula where I started my group. <clears throat> uh, my name is Adam Barn. I own and run Hot Sauce. and. Uh, Fun fact about me is I will go to my grave calling those popular animated images on the web GIFs. <laughs> Please see clapping. I have run a nonprofit based on Drupal for 10 years, and my grandsons call me Gippy. <laughs> is that what we're going to call you at the party tonight? <laughs> That's my Drupal name. Nice. <laughs> my name is John Fireball. I'm from North Gippy, Carolina. Gippy, yeah. And I don't want to take this the wrong way, but I haven't worn a dress since 1950. <laughs> <laughs> the day is young. <laughs> I'm Justin Kaiser. I do website things for the Jacksonville Public Library. So that means I'm a librarian, not really a web developer. Um, my undergrad was in music, and I played the trombone, so I guess that means I'm in a band. We're in a band. I'm pretty sure at this point we have like an orchestra or something. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jim Shaw. I'm the graphic designer for Broad Street Consulting. And fun fact about me is I can now officially say that I've been a comic artist for 10 years and a comics theory educator. Very nice. <laughs> Very true. All right, we're circling back over to the wall. You guys thought coming in late would save you. I think I've seen that TV show. <laughs> Chemical experiments. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm not like lightning. Nothing. Nothing shines. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. My name is John Jennings. I'm a lead developer at Johnson & Johnson. Well, it's hiring. I heard people in the audience say they were looking and we're hiring. So, <coughs> synergy. Uh, fun fact about me, uh, if you've ever seen the TV show Home Improvement with Tim the Toolman Taylor, you'll know what it's like to be around me doing a home improvement project. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. But I don't glow in the dark either. <laughs> Hello, my name is Aaron Sampson. I'm a Scrum Master at uh, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, fun fact about me, I probably play board games three times a week, and if you give me a list of your interests, I can probably tell you what board game you'll love. <laughs> uh, very nice. Hi, uh, my name is Jitesh Doshi. I am a co-owner uh, at Spinspire and developer and business development and everything. Um, and uh, I guess, fun fact, would be, I think uh, about 15 years or so back, I ported GVM to BOS, if anybody has heard yeah, yeah, yeah. BOS. <laughs> Very nice. All right, I think that's everybody. Round of applause. Woo! Now take all the interesting facts and use those in conversation tonight. You went very long, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably, I can shift the blame to them. Yeah. I didn't take that long. All right, uh, Jordana, do you need my computer? No. Nope. All right, well, I'm going to leave it up anyway. <laughs> Can you hit the record button? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. We missed the whole time. Yeah, we have to go again. I'll fix it in post. Hi, I'm Jordana, and we have something we just came up with that we want to encourage all camp organizers to do. For lightning talks, we know it's kind of scary to stand here up on your own. Stand up here on your own. For example, you could make mistakes. But um, we figured out that maybe if we do the buddy system with somebody that's already experienced, you'll feel better doing it. So we want to kind of figure out how we can do this next time to have a buddy system. And if you're looking for a buddy, go to one of the mics or the Jordana. Yeah. All right? Okay, that's it. That's easy. Can read this for the last time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that helps out. <laughs> Alright, how do I reset this timer thing? Try the, uh, reset <laughs> yeah, screw it. Alright, I'm just going to give myself 4 minutes and 38 seconds. Alright, so who here has used Drupal 8's new layout builder? It's freaking awesome. Like, I'm going to give you an example of what that kind of looks like, right? So, hold on. So, all right, so here we are on, uh, we're on uh, a dev site for lullabot.com and this is, this is Layout Builder. So let me just tell, kind of tell you a little bit about Layout Builder. So Layout Builder is, a, uh, is an experimental module within Drupal 8. It's included in core, but it's not recommended, but it's, I recommend it. <laughs> so like, uh, layout Builder depends on the Layout Discovery module, which uses this concept of layouts, and you kind of, layouts are kind of just like regions, uh, basically. But what I'm going to show you is not how to set it up or like how to configure everything. I'm just going to show you what's possible, because once you know what's possible, you can start just like Googling around and maybe trying to figure it out. But be, a little, be aware just a little bit, docu it's still experimental, so the documentation is not quite, quite there yet. Um, and if you need help, there's a, uh, in the Drupal Slack, there's the layouts channel. So what I'm going to do here is, well, I don't want to do it on the live site. <laughs> so, yeah. Sure you do it. Check it. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so we're, on, we're on a dev site right here. So it'll give you a little layouts tab across the top right up here. And we have a couple customizations here that I just kind of want to show you right here. So uh, number one, uh, so you have these sections in here, and we have it where you can add um, CSS classes. So if I remove these CSS classes, you're going to see it's going to be kind of normal. And what I can do is I can, you know, center and add like a margin bottom or something like that and update it, and then it's going to be in there. So let's say I want to create a new section. I'm going to create a new section here. Let's say I want to create three columns, and I'll add a title in here. I'll say 
Florida Drupal, right? And add some classes in here, you heading line short. Let's add this section in here. You're gonna see it says Florida Drupal right here. You, uh, and then I can start adding some content in here. Now I can add whatever blocks I want. I can do a bunch of cool stuff. And you can kind of see how this is pretty cool, right? So like I can add like a little media item. Now this uses, I've, so I, I forgot the, what the, uh, the uh, contrib module is like, yeah, whatever, block something. But so I can select my media that I want and I can, so I can look through here and, and, and kind of find pictures that have been uploaded. Oh yeah, so here's one of me. That's cool. <laughs> so I can add that and I can, uh, once I do that, I can select the view mode right here. So we can say promo and then update layout and it just adds that in there. Let's add a block. I can uh, add a content reference in here so I can choose my content. Let's go ahead and add a quote here. So I'm going to do type you know quote this is just a view right here so all this of course is just like um regular site building uh stuff it's pretty neat let's add you know we'll just do a default view mode update so i got my quote in there and then i can do i don't know uh a what i can do just a, a regular block or something like that let's do a web form and i should have the contact form in here somewhere web form <coughs> contact yeah, it needs to be themed, but you can kind of uncheck display title, add block, and you can see it's ugly because I don't know what I'm doing, but I can save the layout. It's pretty cool, and it's going to save it. Make sure I'm not in the live site. Yes, I'm not. <laughs> you can see that that's all here. Um, what's also kind of cool about this is I can start dragging stuff around. So say I want to move, move this over here so I can click and put that over there. You know, let me. Sometimes I like to zoom out. Let's move this in here because it looks. This would look better over here. Um, all this stuff is like kind of configurable. You can start dragging stuff around. I can move this 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 guy around if I can drag properly up here. And you can see this thing comes up. I don't know what's going on, but whatever. <coughs> and you can start screwing up that way. Pretty cool. Let's save the layout again. Blah blah blah. And you have a new home page. Hopefully, it looks better than this. And ta-da. Mike, is hey, there Mike. a sulfur sponsor? What? Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, because that's all dependent on uh, the CSS. Hey, Mike, can you add content in as you're building the block? And so uh, yeah, yeah, you can add, like, custom blocks in there, and you can create blocks as you're doing it. I'm pretty sure, like, you could just do, like, uh, inline entity. Oh. It's all, like, site building that you can hook up yourself, so you can develop your own custom, uh, your own custom workflows and stuff like that. So, yeah. Is this in configuration? Um... So uh, by default, it is in configuration, but so w w when you set up a content type, we have a content type called, um, we have a content type, I think, called section or landing page or something like that. Let's see what, what it's called right here. Landing page. And if you go to manage display, uh, there's this checkbox to say use layout builder. And if you, if you have that checkbox that says use layout builder, everything's in configuration. But there's another checkbox there that says allow each content item to have its own layout customized. We have that checked right here. As soon as you, as soon as you relate it to the content like that, it stores it in, in the database as opposed to configuration because it's related directly <laughs> to the content. What that means is it's, in a, it's actually in like a hidden field. It uses the field system to manage that, which in theory should be revisionable, which is super cool. Although that doesn't work right now. It's probably a core bug because this is all experimental. Cool. Thank you. We need more people here too, and none of these people so far like get 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 these right here. Uh, do you need my computer? No. All right, cool. Okay, so uh, a few times at this camp and uh, and frequently in my life, I come across uh, like a frequently asked question, and uh, I wanted it kind of like bump butt in and kind of answer this one. It didn't make sense to do it a few times that it came up, so I thought. The lightning talks are always really cool. I'm going to give it a go here. So how many people here have used or have used or tried to use story points for estimation? OK, keep your hands up if you've always wondered or been curious, what is the, the difference between story points and hours? OK. OK, so this, this one, this is for you guys, OK? So not only can story points, not only are they different than hours, they cannot be hours, OK? And we can find the answer if we think about velocity. Velocity is distance over time. 
you're traveling a certain distance over a certain amount of time. So if you're trying to figure out your velocity per sprint, your time is two weeks. So if your story points are hours, where does that factor in? What you're left with is your story points are your distance. And so if we think of story points as distance, we can use a distance analogy. So about how many miles is it from here to New York City? Do you know? So anyway, <laughs> until you measure it, either by driving it, doing the drive, or by looking it up, you, don't, you, you have to estimate it. And once you measure it, once you know what it is, and I looked it up, it's about 1,000, about 1,000 miles. So how many miles is it if you drive it in a Prius? 1,000 a thousand miles. How many miles is it if you drive it in a Ferrari? Thousand. Thousand miles, right? Okay. So if, so if story points are more like distance, we can pick a we can pick some task that we know the distance of it, we know how big it is, we know uh, we know we know what it is, and we can give that a ref we can call that a reference story. And we can estimate based off of that. Okay, so if we know that New York City is a thousand miles and we want to estimate how many miles it would be to Quebec. We might look at a map and think that, I don't know, maybe it's like 1,500 miles or something, okay? And we can, re we can estimate our stories based on our reference story. And that way, when our stories are more like distance, we can actually improve our skills and get faster. We can go from being a Prius to a Ferrari, and that's how our velocity increases from sprint to sprint. You can't do that if your story's right. Okay. question. So why? So <coughs> Why are story points typically in one, two, four, eight increments, which makes it super confusing because there's eight hours in the workday, and that's where the confusion lies. The, so why, did, why do that in the first So place? the reason why you use a Fibonacci scale is to account for the complexity in a larger drive or a larger task. So you can, you can be more certain if it's down in the one, two, three area, but if the task starts getting bigger than that, you're starting to want to account for more variance, and so your jumps <coughs> Between notches get bigger and bigger. So if I said, well, how long is how long how many miles would it be if we go from here to Quebec to Alaska? Without looking at a map, it's like, you know, you're up in there in the 44, you know, for the Fibonacci signature, you're allowing for more variance. And you want to go with the higher one to, to give yourself more room. So it's if 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 you're measuring or you're tracking uh, not as a time unit, but a Effort unit or, or something to that matter. Um, how do you measure how long it is going to take then, and, and, and use that that number to understand how long it's going to take for junior developer versus senior developer to actually achieve <coughs> finishing? You don't want to know. You commit to it as a team. They, they all need to vote, and then they all need to vote, and there, this is the difference in the history. Yeah. The team group estimates, and over time, the team starts to know a certain velocity that it can do each sprint, and the team commits to to those number of points. So it could be a developer that's stronger in one area, and another developer that's stronger in the other. So they don't necessarily need to be the super senior. It's, you know, it's it's it, that that complexity thing is. It doesn't matter if one developer might be stronger in one slower than the other, then it then it flips like one's quicker with the next one is slower. It's all over time. But when you're traveling from here to uh, New York, say, you are more concerned about how fast you can go there. <laughs> yeah. So won't you pick up a Ferrari or a, a Prius if you want to be? Well, you, well, you want to help your team. You want to help the Priuses on your team become Ferraris. <laughs> maybe they, maybe after 10 sprints, you have a team of Ferraris. Well, aren't you restricted we by the speed Thank you. Hey, I, I want to invoke a code of conduct. All this talk about uh, Prius versus Ferrari is de depressing me because I drive a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, do you want a timer or no? Uh, how do I get it? Uh, I hit the wrong button. Alright, I'm going to set a timer for you. Alright. So if you've seen this talk before, apologies. Um, 
But uh, Matthew Connerton gave me a high five in the hallway earlier today, so that kind of brought back some PTSD. So this title, this talk has a few different titles. It's better than a sharp stick in the eye, or keep those retinas attached, or what I like, the Texas high five incident. So I was at Texas camp. It was late at night. There had been drinking, and I was victim of a misplaced high five. And I got poked in the eye. Luckily, I shut my eye, you know, in time, but what I didn't expect is I saw a really bright flash of light. And I'm like, that's just like that, right? That timing could not be better. So, you know, I'm like, that's odd. So what do you do? You go to Google. I poke bright light. Right? And so the first thing I link I click on, you know, first off, um, biology stack exchange. <laughs> what? <laughs> cool. Others have tried this too. <laughs> All right. So you as as you expect on Stack Exchange, there's lots of different, you know, where's and why nots and I see this. Basically, it happened to Isaac Newton. So I'm like, hey, cool. Like, maybe I'll have something in common. Um, turns out, not so. So, you know, you go to some of the more real answers, and there's a whole lot of technical jargon, which made no sense to me. So, about those retinas, do a little bit more scrolling down, and you see this uh, eye injury retinal detachment thing. So, what have we learned? Uh, don't try this at home. Be kind to your eye holes. And I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV. I learned the site that we developed number two on the Google search results for I poked myself in the eye. You know, I had to Photoshop that one. It was like maybe four or five. <laughs> Are you guys enjoying Drupal Camp 2019? Yeah. Let's hear it. I just want to thank all the, the amazing people who put this on because I just keep showing up and getting great value and meeting people like you. There's no button to hit. I don't have any fancy Google searches on a, on a presentation. I threw this together like an hour and a half ago when I realized lightning talks were happening. Um, who here would love to live a more fulfilling life? Woo! Yeah. I mean, isn't that what we're all seeking? To so have a three-step philosophy process that I've been like kind of developing but never shared publicly. So you guys are like the first ones to hear this amazingness. I have to take a few notes though to give you my best. Um, did you know that people are most happy when they have deep, trusting, long-term relationships and when they have goals that reach beyond their own needs and desires. Now this is scientifically proven recently, we're coming out with more and more data about this. So we kind of know what creates happiness, but we don't always know how to get there. I mean, how do you find a lifelong partner and all that? Um, and my idea uh, is that our growth is our most fulfilling activity, right? So we're always seeking something better in some way. We want improvement, we want either things or knowledge or new relationships that kind of stretch the way we think and feel. It includes learning and experiencing new things, which may not be in our comfort zone. But the results are really our greatest happiness. So even though um, we might be uncomfortable with that growth when we're in it, after we look back and reflect, we realize how much it really brought to us. And that excites me because when we go through that growth process, we can learn what we like and what we don't like. And that's important. Um, so it's important to know those things, to determine the principles, rules, and ideas that guide our best selves. And to me, being your best self is like the biggest, most important thing that you can do in the world. So come ready to play and do your best and like bring everything you got, right? So when we come to things like Drupal Camp and we're improving our skills, we're doing that for ourselves and we're doing that for our community and we're doing that for our employers and like our vision at large. Um, but I got a three-step process. Step one is to understand who you are. Because you can't do anything 
moving forward without understanding what you've got to work with, what you uh, stand for, the things you care about, and especially what you can't stand for. I have a lot of principles that I operate on, and I can tell you right away when someone's doing something that offends me. I don't know if you guys are all, you know, that on top of things, but I can get pissed off pretty easily, and I'll know why, because I know there's a principle that I stand for, they are violating it, and so I have something to say. Um, so I encourage you to discover yourself by asking yourself what activities, behaviors, experiences, and people make you happy. Have you ever thought about it? You probably have somebody that you just love being around, and you, they make you feel good, and they make you want to do things in the world, and if you're feeling down, you can call them up, right? Um, and that'll happen with activities. Maybe you've got sports or you've got some sort of hobbies you really love to do. Uh, and then experiences, things that like you put yourself in a situation, you've learned something new, and you kind of realize there's a pattern sometimes to those things. Is there something that you feel drawn to do in the world that seems way too big to tackle? You know how everybody's talking about your big why and nobody knows what it is and it's so hard to figure it out? That's what it is. Your big why is that big thing in the world that you think, I'm too small, I'm that one little tiny person who can't really do something that big. Now why would I tackle that? Because that's gonna be really uncomfortable. But here we go back to that. That's your growth period. And you know what, when you strive for it, when you actually reach for something that big, it doesn't matter if you actually hit the goal. What matters is the journey that you are on, trying to get there, and the people that you can attract to take you to that goal. And the, the fun and the excitement really comes from that moment that you just, you're sitting with people that you love and care about who are on a path together. And that's what really kind of gives you that insight about who you are and what you're kind of reaching for. Now, number two, oh, well, let me get back to that first one. I have a word for that. That first step is called define. Define yourself. So if you want the three steps, uh, we're moving through that. So the second thing is to make a mindful list of the things that you've just discovered about yourself and how they fit into your world. Not someone else's plans, not everything else that's going on, but where you see your vision for the things you actually just learned about yourself. Now, how would these activities change your present life? You know there's probably something in your life you're unhappy with. Maybe you know what it is, maybe you kind of feel what it is, but this is the step that you go through next after you've figured out some of the things that make you happy. Well, where are those things that are disconnected from you going to the next step? <clears throat> what things might you have to change to include more of those things you love and care about? You might have to look at your life and say, oh, that stuff that's going on over there is not really conducive <laughs> to this nice thing I want to be doing next. Ask yourself if you had only the activities, experiences, behaviors, and people in your life that bring you joy, where would you be located? What kind, you guys mind if I keep going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. What kind of work would you be doing? Who would your friends and colleagues be? And what's your off time or me time would look like to you? I call that step designing. So that's define, step number one. And step number two is design, because you now have to think of a path forward, and this is your path forward. So you're designing a life. So step three is taking from what you've discovered and making a plan for how you will move forward towards your new life. You need to envision your ideal day, your ideal week, your ideal month, maybe even a year. People do this all the time. We do life planning, we do scheduling, all this stuff, but is it ever really organized in a way that you can kind of Fight that off and just go for it. So it's really important to do that. You need a plan to take steps to include more of the fulfilling things in your life and less of the crappy stuff. So does your ideal life require you to let go of some things? Ask yourself. There's people, or maybe you're in a house you don't like, or a location you live in and your job sucks. You know, that's gonna be tough to let go of, but you need to let go of them to make more room for the amazing things that you are about to have in your life. You can't have all that going on at the same time. You really do need to make room for it. Do you need a different line of work? Do you need to do something different with your spare time? Maybe you need to have other people in your life. Well, you need to create a plan for that. And I call that the align stage. This is where you take all the vision, all of the knowledge you just learned about yourself, and you move forward into the world to create a better life for yourself. And all of that comes together under what I call authenticity. And I've been trying to live an authentic life and share my best self with everybody that I can. And I'm so glad to be here giving this presentation and being with you guys because like, you guys feed me in my soul and I appreciate that. 
So I really thank you for letting me be here. Can I have one more thing? Everybody, can I do a selfie? <laughs> This five minutes, but keep on going. Do you need the computer or anything? Nope. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm not a developer at all, so all I can share with you is a story. Yay. Yay. So I was in Louisiana. It was baking hot, and I was on the phone calling the police. Hello, Small Town Police Department. How can we help you? Hi, my name is Stephen, and I'm walking across the United States for charity. And uh, my walk today is going to end in your town, and uh, I'm all by myself. So I need a place to stay. Can you guys help me out? Hmm. Well, you know what? There's no place to stay here. So have a good day. Bye. <laughs> and I thought to myself, now I've got to stay with them. <laughs> <laughs> So I wait an hour, and I call back. Hey, my name is Stephen Hanilica, and I'm walk, doing this walk, and you guys were going to help me find a place to stay tonight, right? Oh, we were? Same lady. <laughs> let, me, let me ask the chief. Chief gets on the phone. There's no place to stay here. Keep walking. <laughs> now I'm just like, I really have to stay with these people now. If they find me, I am like done. <laughs> I call back about another hour later. It's starting to get towards the evening. Hello, small town police department. This is Margaret. How can I help? Hey, my name's Steven, blah, blah, blah. You guys are going to help me find a place to stay, right? Yeah, I didn't hear, I didn't have a note about that, so uh, wait, let me get Officer Ortego. Officer Ortego gets on the phone. Well, Chief didn't leave me a note or anything like that, I don't know what's going on, but I'll give her a call and see, see uh, what she has to say about it. So for about 10 minutes, I am sweating bullets. I get a call back, and I'm like, hey, this is Steven. How you guys doing? He goes, well, Chief said I can throw you in a cell. Are you coming, or am I picking you up? Uh, I'll, I'll walk to you. It's fine. Okay. How long? Uh, I'll see you in about an hour. Okay. I'll see you in an hour. <laughs> so I show up to the police station, but it wasn't the police station. It was the police station, the courthouse, and the community center. And I walk up, Officer Ortega comes out and he goes, Hey, Stephen, great to meet you. How you doing? Come on in. It's like, okay, I come in. Now, this is Margaret, and she is the night dispatcher for the night, and this is Officer Eric, and Officer Eric was about six foot two, about 300 pounds, not because of muscle. <laughs> and he goes, hey, how you doing? And he's like, no, we, uh, we got some accommodations for you. Let me bring it on back and show you. We got the washer and dryer there in case you need to do any laundry or clothing or anything. We didn't know like what shampoo or body wash you'd like, so we just brought it all out. Uh, and we got the cell here. We doubled up the mattresses, so it's as comfortable as we can make it. So you have a good night. I'm going to get home to the missus. Wow. Officer Ortega walks out. 
an officer turns to me and goes, so, uh, are you hungry? I'm like, yes. Okay. Hey, Margaret, we're going down to May's Diner. <laughs> <laughs> so we hop, in, we hop in his squad car, and we're going down to May's Diner. He's showing me all the gizmos and gadgets and <laughs> this, uh, the speed radar and everything. We get there, we sit down, open up a menu, I'm like, okay, that looks like the highest calorie thing possible on this entire menu. I was like, I will have one of those. And he goes, oh man, that one's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we both get two. <laughs> and then I take my wallet out to pay and he goes, I don't know, don't worry about it. Thanks, man. And we both walk out. <laughs> and I'm just like, I like I feel this is wrong, <laughs> but I don't know how to approach this. So, okay, apparently I'm out of time. No, you can go for a little while. <laughs> no, okay. Keep on going. Keep on going. Okay. This is good. Yeah. Um, so, so we get back in the car, and he goes, so, uh, you want to join me on night patrol? <laughs> Like, how often am I, am I going to get the opportunity to go on night patrol in a tiny little town in Louisiana? Of course I'll go on night patrol. So we go on night patrol and nothing's happening. Like, just nothing is happening. We go back to, he drops me back off the station. Margaret starts telling me about some of the politics of the town. And apparently the mayor owns like 50% of the real estate in the town, which is why he has always elected the mayor. <laughs> and the police chief is always the chief of police because she happens to be the mayor's best friend. And when you are, uh, you don't mess with the mayor, you don't mess with any of his business partners, and you don't mess with any of their relatives. So when, um, so later that night, when this kid comes in, he starts yelling and screaming at the police, they can't touch him because he is the son of one of the mayor's business partners. And I end up like after all the whole blue is done, I end up going to bed, I get up, and I get walking, make it about 20 more miles to the next town. And I was sitting there talking with some people and they were like, wait a second, if you're here and you only walk 20 miles a day, where did you stay last night? I was like, why well, stay in a little tiny town? Why, what's wrong with that? Like that is the most corrupt state. That's the, the most corrupt city in all of Louisiana. And like they had been known to like arrest and kill people. And it was like, I was cool. Like I stayed with the cops, it was good. <laughs> so, Always figure out like who the most powerful person is in that situation, <laughs> situation and like be their best friend. <laughs> Do you want to become a super developer? Um, so I was and then these are like uh, like IDEs like similar to this to help you code stuff. Okay. So I will never use those enough okay. to be able to move. She Fair. would though. He's my partner. So yeah, I, I'm her boyfriend, so if you want to give an extra thing. Well, it's so kind of, do you, do you, are you going to use it? Yeah, I have to use it. Yeah. Yeah. She does the development stuff. All right, so we're kind of getting that, but yeah. what do you think, Mike? Do we have time for one more? All right. So we have time for a couple more because technically we're done at five, and the closing stuff is going to take about 10 minutes. All right, well, let's, uh, let's, let's keep up. So we got a amount of time. Do you need a computer? Uh, no. All right. I'm going to set a timer for you, but you can go over a little bit if you want. Cool. Uh, 
I'm gonna talk to y'all about sourdough starters. Woo! Yeah. Uh, who likes um, bread? <laughs> okay, so sourdough starter is basically like your own little uh, ecosystem of yeast that you grow probably in a jar. Mine are in jars. Uh, and basically what you do is you take flour and water and then you keep feeding it flour and water until it starts uh, the, the natural yeast that like exist in the air and then the, the, the flour will start eating like all the gluten and all the other parts of the flour. And then eventually like their activity will cause bubbles which like act as a leavening agent for things like sourdough bread. Um, so I have two sourdough starters um, because when you use different flours, different flours have different characteristics, and so they make your bread taste different. So um, I have a sourdough starter um, made from all-purpose flour. Uh, its name is John Denver because it's <laughs> leaven on a jet plane. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I also have one. Uh, its name is George Clinton because it's extra funky. Uh, fun fact, if you don't feed your sourdough starter uh, for a while, it starts to accumulate this like kind of cloudy liquid on top of like the, the starter called hooch. Um, because the fermentation process is just like pumping out this like, it's like the waste product. So I'm pretty sure, I haven't like looked into this, but like I'm pretty sure like if you just do that with fruit, that's how you get like drinkable food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it's super easy to like start a sourdough starter. You just take flour and water and then just like add equal parts flour and water and then like more flour and water like daily and then like uh, it'll start to like bubble and then it'll be great. Um, you can make more than just sourdough bread with sourdough starters. Uh, you can make muffins and cake and pancakes and uh, other baked goods. Uh, I personally love sourdough pizza, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there's like really, really great recipes that you can use and lots of resources online. Uh, I would suggest all of you make sourdough starter because it's, it's also vegan because it's just like sourdough bread is vegan because it's just like flour and water and salt unless you count like <coughs> the yeast is like because they're living organisms <laughs> kind of gray area there but like I'll, I'll leave that to you to start out uh, but yeah that's that, that, that. Um, we should look online because it's super easy but like just go home and take some flour and water and just like stir it and just like watch it for a little bit and we'll turn into something delicious. So. <laughs> uh, do you want a uh, pastry storm or a uh, drupalize me? Do you oh, need one? I would love a drupalize me. All right. <laughs> drupalize me. All right. So, who up? Who's up next? You want a Brandon Seats? Nope. Hey. Um, nothing to do specifically with Drupal, but in my spare time, um, I uh, stumbled across a video online. Um, CGP Gray, if you've ever uh, seen his videos, just educational stuff. He made a rant about uh, boarding planes and uh, and the methodologies that uh, airliners use to uh, to board planes. And I was so interested in it that I decided to write my own simulator. Uh, in Node. Um, you guys want to see it? Yes. All right. So, what is a common boarding methodology used today? Yeah. You want to do? Okay. Uh, so. Whoever paid the most gets on first. So, what is the slowest uh, ways to board a plane? Uh, my, my simulation accounts for a lot of things. Like it accounts for uh, the amount of time people take to uh, uh, stow their baggage. Uh, the amount of time it takes for people to get out of your way so you can get to the, the window and then get back to their seats and other things like that. Um, so for right now, I'll start off with showing you um, a common methodology, which is loading back to front, right? So I'll just change the configuration file over here. Uh, so I'm going to change this to custom. And this is going to play out a little animation in the uh, in my ID or my ID in my uh, terminal here. 
So let's see if this works. So each one of these numbers represents uh, a person and the amount of bugs that they're carrying. Uh, so currently they're in boarding group one or five, however you want to consider this. Uh, and they're running back to front. And the bottleneck is always when somebody is stuck in the middle of their aisle, you know, old grannies have a hard time picking up their uh, suitcase. Uh, and while that's happening, everybody who's on the plane and off the plane has to wait for one single person to load their baggage. Uh, so the real measure of efficiency for boarding a plane is the amount of concurrent stows, the amount of people who can simultaneously pick their baggage up and put it up at the same time. That way, like, clearing the row for the next, uh, next people to come on, uh, on the plane. Uh, so that's back to front. Uh, it's a little bit randomized, like people kind of naturally pick random seats in their boarding groups, kind of like, uh, uh, like they would do in real life. Uh, steps are kind of arbitrary periods of time. You can think of them as seconds, uh, but they don't specifically have to be seconds. So in this plane configuration with 12 rows and six columns, or uh, yeah, that took about 529 steps. However you want to think about that. Back to front. All right, any other methodologies we want to try? Random. Haven't we'll get to random, but we, we can do it. Let's do random. So you'd think that random would be a uh, shit show, uh, and it might be, <laughs> but it's a shit show that's actually faster. Let's take a look. So currently for simplicity, uh, all passengers are carrying just a single bag. I can change the configuration and they'll carry more than one bag. Uh, but if you look, we can, we can already see we've got like five concurrent steps happening at the same time, because it maximizes the amount of uh, like entropy in the system that allows people to kind of distribute themselves evenly throughout uh, throughout the passenger, uh, throughout the plane. Speed up, 350 steps. Random. Makes me so mad. Um, <laughs> so, uh, if any of you are, con uh, uh, are aware of the concept of first class, uh, that's essentially the fun of the plane. And, made me so mad the other day I've seen it, in first class, people like ordering a drink. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, Flight attendant would, you know, kind of stop the whole line, like, hold up, hold up, I got the champagne for this young gentleman up the front, and that holds the whole system up. Uh, so I'm gonna model a front to back situation here, uh, and we'll just see how slow this is, or fast. You never know, but it's slow. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, uh, front to. I bet. Try that. So here we go. Front boarding group. Look at these fuckers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we're, we're happy boarding and we've only managed to get two concurrent stows. That's just, that's just no good. All right. Uh, there's a couple other uh, other things we can try. Um, what is, what was that? Window to aisle. Window to aisle. That's a great suggestion. Let's, uh, let's get that working here. So window to aisle. I, of course, have, have kind of built all these strategies uh, ahead of time. 557, that makes me so mad. Uh, all right, that's, where are we go? cancel. So this is window to aisle. So this is almost, uh, this is basically random, except with the added benefit of nobody having to get out of their seats to let other people in. So this is probably gonna be the fastest one we're gonna see uh, that is a reasonable thing to ask people to do. Uh, in the middle. <coughs> There you go, 350. All right, I'm out of time, but let me show you in, a, uh, in an unrealistic world uh, where you can tear families apart and have people uh, behave exactly like robots. Let me just show you. This is a world we could live in, uh, except not really. Fastest possible way to board a plane. Ready? Go. Yeah. Woo, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> this is what I'm aiming for. Look at I have THP Storm, storm, but I would love to drip me. Do you have any more? Uh, no, no more drip me. How, how long is that? Uh, just one year license, and it also can cover like WebStorm if you do want to do no development of WebStorm. Sure. Thank you. Hey, cool, we got one more. Tell us that that's on GitHub or something. It will be. Uh, by the way, it's written in TypeScript. Uh, this was kind of me playing around with TypeScript and just testing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, please. I'm gonna do one more, then I'll do mine in the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian? Uh, this uh, lightning talk is called uh, the shortest lightning talk of all time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, sir?
sir, like a PHP store or a web store license? I already have one, so somebody else yeah, can take it. Yeah, I have it? Alright, cool. Alright. So how about... Hi, I'm Tom Slyker from uh, South Carolina, and I just wanted to share a couple things that I learned recently about Google Maps. So, uh, my business is uh, we're a Google Partner, so we help uh, businesses get found online, right? Do SEO, Google Ads, and Google Local. So, a big part is we try to make sure every small business has their location set correctly on Google Maps. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen these kind of anomalies, but every once in a while you see some anomalies. And, uh, one, that, one that we came across recently was a business had claimed a location years and years ago. And so you have a Google location for a particular address. And what we found though, if you Googled this company or anything else, pretty much any search on Google Maps, you would see this one business on this address. So it was, let's say, uh, 1617 Railroad Avenue, something like that. And uh, But if you typed in their address, it showed a completely different location. And so we had, we had people that would type in the address <coughs> And it would show a location on Google Maps completely on the other side of town, like in a complete random, like at a dead end. And so that was concerning, right? So this thing was out there, and then yet people would, would find this address, and then and, and they would just end up at this dead end. And so that's, that's one anomaly. You know, the way to fix that is, uh, in this particular case, we ended up basically having to, to request you know, you tell Google Maps that the location is not there; it's somewhere else. But um, so that's that's one. Another thing that we found recently, I've seen this twice now, where somebody, you know, Google goes out there and, and searches, you know, I think like databases, businesses, and stuff like that. So if they think there's a business at a particular address, they'll create a listing for it. Whereas if you've already created a listing for your business at that address, you could end up with two listings. And so another situation was somebody had a home business and she didn't want her at home address to be shown on, on Google. And so she set up her business to not have an address visible. And so, which is a terrible thing for SEO and stuff because Google doesn't know where you are. So that definitely is gonna hurt you. Um, so she set up the business with, and she's got all these reviews and she's been maintaining her Google My Business thing. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, this uh, a location appeared at her house. And so when I Googled her, she was asking me a question about this. And, um, and so when I Googled her business, it actually showed a listing that had just been generated in, in some recent time that was her home address again. And so she, she was like, she couldn't believe it. She's like, that's never been there before. And so she had this, uh, so now we have two locations again. And so my, my advice to her was to go ahead and Google's probably gonna always know your address because your address is, uh, you know, it's the Secretary of State, you've registered it in different places. So they know that this business is associated with this address. And so my advice to her was to go ahead and just own that and go ahead and change change her Google local uh, uh, her, her Google My Business to go ahead and use her home address and go ahead and get go claim that one that they had created, close it down as permanently closed, and then move the one that didn't have an address to her current address. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that because uh, it's interesting what you see on Google Maps these days. You may you're using mine. God answers. Okay, first of all, I can't believe no one else has done this for all the grammar and uh, spelling nerds. Good golly, this has been making me crazy for about... Oh, I'm going to wait for that to come up here. Lowercase. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was like that. We're going to make this right. Woo! Let's all take a deep breath now, those of you who have been with me for the past hour, waiting for that. Can you, um, while I do this, can you pull up the map to the party? 
Just so we yes, got sir. Back there. All right, so real quick, uh, is Governor Steven from Drug here? Okay. I told them earlier to be here. Well, you heard me talk about them earlier. They were here, they're at the table all day. Hopefully you met them. I was going to have them stand up right now, but they're not here, so that's cool. Uh, the phone that we, we were giving away, did we give that away to the right phone <laughs> earlier? I think we did, right? Yeah, I went to John, and I think... Okay. We also have a nice pair of sunglasses to give away. Did. So if anybody lost their sunglasses, they're out front still. So, um, they're who, Hugs? Is that a brand? Hugs. What? What's that? They lost the last night. Oh, we lost night at the bar. That was mine. Is it really? No. That's, that's your name. That's not. It's quizzes. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're gonna give away some sunglasses. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so you guys have sunglasses. Yeah. 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 Y
right. meetups, and then people are, are becoming... My thought is to kick it off, I want to kick it off with basically a schedule for like the next six to nine meetups, six to nine months worth of meetups. That's that's my thought. Are you going to make the link available for people outside of Florida? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> everybody but the Chattanooga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Okay. Anything else? All right. Let's wrap Thanks this. Chattanooga and Knoxville guys need to start to do that. Okay. We actually synchronized our meeting, so they'll go to one, we'll go to one, and we'll talk to them. And we're, we're do, using the location as the library because they have the infrastructure for, oh. for the feed. This okay. could be a bigger thing. So, okay. 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 Both talked about can we have a calendar where everyone does this, like all of the meetups that we can dial into? Yeah, sure. We could, but that's not the best direction for any of that effort. Let's <laughs> <laughs> have that effort. It's a Thanks. great idea. Thanks for doing it. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, amazingly, I learned, you know, apparently, this, this, this word I'm about to tell you is a word that everybody knows. I literally learned it uh, a week and a half ago. It's voluntold. <laughs> and I thought it was great, and then everyone looked at me like, you've never heard that. I've never heard never it. So, okay, uh, wait, what, the, Mark, go. Uh, I, I was just going to say the Albuquerque branch would happily participate as well. So. Okay, all right. Adam? I was, was going to say, um, let's talk for sure. Tampa will take the lead. We'll, I'll, I'll volunteer to run this whole thing. So. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Sunday tomorrow starts at 9 a.m. We'll have uh, uh, coffee, water, juice, donuts, bagels, uh, three, three types of cream cheese. I discussed this at great length. I'm going to head there now and get quite, the drink tickets and stuff. Quite an ordeal for us to figure out exactly what the flavor of cream cheese is necessary, but we've got to figure it out. Um, sessions tomorrow, half a day, uh, contribution sprints. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, not for Dead. Contribution oh. dead. I'm learning. I'm trying so hard. Oh. I didn't say nothing. Didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow's a great late back day. Those of you who've been here before on Sunday, we basically, <laughs> we're, it's centered in the break room with food and tables and people and great conversation and sprints and learning. So come tomorrow. It's, much, it's, it's a very relaxed day. The party starts in about, what are we saying? Six, six, yeah, yeah. Kyle just took off to go like okay. organize it and drink all the tickets. In about an hour, <laughs> downstairs, not upstairs, bring your activity clothes, jumpsuits or whatever. Bring you know? socks. We're bring bowling. Socks. So, yes. and, and, and like we're allowed to have 25 shoes out at a time, yep. but uh, you need socks. Yeah, so we might figure out some type of, you know, crazy giveaways for bowling. I don't know. Yeah. This is what the place looks like. What's it called? Firkin Kegler. Firkin and Kegler. Firkin and Kegler. You can see it right there. Yeah, I got. The, I, <laughs> so take a right out of the parking lot, and you basically come around, and then you make another right, and you go straight down. Yeah, it, it'll. It's like 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes at the most. Uh, there's food there. There is. There's a like bar type food there. We're probably going to buy a bunch of towers. It's not yeah. enough. There's yeah. everybody. Yeah. There's everybody. There's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. There's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. There's everybody. So there's plenty of places to eat down in that area. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, you know, they don't be there right at the We'll be there from 6 to 10. We have the bowling. I think it's less than that, but... Uh, 6 to 10. Is it? All right. All right. Should we wear badges? To continue to know each other. Sure. sure. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like the bowling lanes are lot, like right by the bar. There's shoes, there's bowling. There's going to be fun. There'll probably be some injuries. It's going to be good. <laughs>